they go doing me now? I'm still a talk of the town. Don't need assistance, I'm hooking them down. We turn the smiles in the frown. You gladly take it. That's just how I was brought up. That's just how I was strengthened. Niggas out here want respect. What's up, y'all? It's your girl Bree. We're here for another interview with Talk of the Town. And today I have. Rod up. Rod up. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get right into it. So, yes, where are you from? From Harlem. Uh, 11th floor, 114th, 8th. Niggas know. Feel me? Okay, so of course you got two names floating around here. So we we gonna get into Rada first. How did that name come about? Um, Rada. To be honest with you, it came about like me just like I had a story went about. I was in like this little clique or whatever. Mm -hmm. Feel me? And niggas had categories, mm -hmm. so niggas was like, you got like top bosses and you got top rider. So I was the top rider. At the time, I was going by Rich Rail, but they was they was like, "Yo, ride a rail, ride a rail." So I'm like, "I like how that shit fit." You feel me? So okay. I just took it and ran with it. But I'm trying to like get that shit to stand for something. You feel me? Okay. I don't want to just be known for, "Yo, that's ride a rail." Like, nah, bro. So what do you mean? Elaborate on that more. You mean mm -hmm. like you wanted to stand for something in terms of what? Yeah, like uh, something something meaningful. Like I was writing some shit. Uh, realize your destiny ain't here. So I was like, I right, I could kind of fuck with that, but then okay. I could kind of feel me choose something different too. So so you want to turn Rider into like an acronym? Yeah, basically. Okay, yeah, cool. So fun. is there any difference between Rider and Rider Rail? Because I see them. Kind um, of <laughs> uh, you could say that because like Rail and, and Rider, they completely two different people. Mm -hmm. Like like most females, they know me as Rail. Okay. Most of my niggas, they know me as Gutter. So it's like only the Rail that know me could call me Gutter, but. If you know me as like from the music and shit, just, uh -huh. just call me Rider Rev. So you see, it's funny that you say that uh -huh. because your Instagram name is <laughs> Gutter Rican. So That's a fact. I mean, you don't have Rider Rev in your Instagram mm -hmm. name or anything like that. So uh -huh. what made you choose that as your Instagram <laughs> handle instead of your artist name? To be real with you, um, shout out to my brother Quay. He he gave me that name, Gutter Rican. Mm -hmm. I just always wanted to keep it. You feel me? I ain't know where I would put it. Well. What it'll do, what it where it's gonna fit. Mm -hmm. I was probably gonna turn it to a song, probably even a, a EP. But okay. I'm like, yo, I I'll put it as my Instagram name, and I had that shit for dumb long, so I just kept it. So the Rican comes from what you being. Like. Yeah, me. I'm black and Puerto Rican. Shouts to my Boricuas. Okay. You feel me? So is there any? Can we expect any Spanish, oh, shit, Latin, nah. <laughs> somewhere down the line? Nah, no funny shit. I'll be with it. Like, you uh -huh. feel me? Say if, like, a female or even a, a, a Latin artist wanted to collab. Excuse me. Wanted okay. to collab. I'll be with it. Like, I'm with it. I'm, I don't speak Spanish, though. You feel okay, me? Okay, so no suave Yeah, like, I, I could, you know, two-step <laughs> here and there, feel me? Uh -huh. But, yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a try to figure it out, though. Okay, so how long have you been making music for? To be real with you, I've been making music since I was, like, dumb young probably like like 15 16 that's when i was really taking it serious like before then i used to really like write poetry at that time mm -hmm. you feel me that mm -hmm. shit like had a nigga escaping so mm -hmm. but yeah like 15 16 like around there i started taking that shit real serious i'm like yeah fuck it so i started doing songs and all that like i ain't really like share the songs to nobody or none of that i'll just do them and like keep them shits for myself so then yeah probably like to be honest with you, like really putting music out there, I'll give it like a good three, four years. That okay. was when I was really doing it. I think it's interesting that you said that you started off writing poetry and then went into music. Because uh -huh. I was just um, watching um, an interview with Lakia and she said mm -hmm. the same thing. Like That's she a did fact. a poetry slam, a poetry slam, and somebody recommended that That's like she fact. become an artist. So when you were writing your poetry, did you like feel it in your soul that you wanted to pursue music, or did somebody give you that push to get there? To be real with you. Like, I always loved music, but mm -hmm. I ain't never really know the format. I ain't never really know, like, yo, this got to be a 16. This got to be a hook. You could talk your shit ahead. You could have some space, leave out for the beat right there. I ain't never know that. So it was just like, that shit, yeah, that shit seemed, like, too difficult for me, mm -hmm. at least when I was writing poetry. So I'm like, poetry seems simpler. Like, I can just write eight bars and won't even know it's eight bars. Mm -hmm. So. so do you still write, write poetry or...? Um, 
Nah, I gotta really be inspired. You feel me? Like, if I ain't inspired, it makes no sense to write it because it ain't gonna come out like. Well, it ain't too much about how it's gonna sound or it's it coming out. Mm -hmm. It's more like what you feel. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if I don't feel inspired, I ain't gonna really have a feeling to do it. So, what would you say is the difference between you writing poetry and you writing music? What causes or sparks your inspiration for you to write your music? Mm hmm. Cause when I write poetry, it's more relaxing. Like it, it's crazy. Cause like I I don't even do it, but I just find myself doing it. Like mm -hmm. I might be trying to write a verse, and the shit come out to be a whole poet poet like like poetry type shit. So it's like yeah. I'll just sit there and be like, you know what, four bars is good enough. That's how I was feeling. Now let me just write some poetry. You mm -hmm. feel me? Like so. But a lot of people don't know. Like I'm really like like deep like that. But I don't really be trying to put that out there you know okay all right so walk me through your creative process because you just mm -hmm. say you know sometimes you can write one bar and then it turns into a whole thing so yeah. like what is your creative process like How, where are you comfortable writing what does that look like uh me being comfortable writing i'll have to of course be by myself mm -hmm. um it ain't gotta be a, a, a time or a day or a, a none of that it's just like say if i'm going through something or maybe even one of my mans is going through something mm -hmm. or a situation I probably just read about or saw about. I'm probably just put myself in their shoes for a minute and just write something because okay. it's like, it's relatable. So that's really how I do it though. But I'm just, yeah, just sitting there by myself, mm -hmm. probably smack, probably just finished doing music. It's like, fuck it, let me take some time to just get my mind right, get intellectual real quick. Okay, so, so I know you had... <laughs> A project that dropped not too long ago, Demonstrators. Yeah. Um, how do you how do you feel about that rollout? How do you feel about the feedback? Mm -hmm. Um, the feedback was, was I ain't gonna lie, better than I imagined. Mm -hmm, Cause like sure. I haven't heard nobody say like, yo, you gotta work on this. You got like, nah, every song on there, a nigga telling me, yo, this part I fucked it. Mm -hmm. Yo, that part I fucked it. Mm -hmm. Yo, this song, yo, yo, play this song, yo. When it start raining, yo, play can't stand the rain. So it's like. <laughs> It's so much shit that, that, like, I really didn't anticipate was going go on with the tape. So everybody else just made me feel like, yo, nigga, like, keep doing another one. Like, you feel me? Or if you're going to not do another one, do a video for everything. So just so we can have something to watch when we listening to this right, shit. Right, I mean, it really did seem like the feedback was pretty good. I saw a self yeah. play, um Game Face yeah. on 105. So that was lit. Full fact. Um, so do you feel like... I know you're from Harlem. Do you feel like your people like got your back? Do you feel like the support is there? Nah, yeah, of course. I'm I'm gonna always say that. You feel me? Even regardless, cause in your city you gonna tend to get more hate than you do love. So mm -hmm. it's like I'm gonna always feel like the city behind me. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna always feel like niggas is gonna hate too, cause that's just what niggas do. Of course, that comes with it. Exactly. So some niggas can't do what you do, but they gonna hate. But at the end of the day, you probably knew this nigga. This nigga was probably your man, your day one. This nigga could be even a family member. Mm -hmm. But the hate is gonna come regardless. So I just make sure I maintain that love, though. You feel me? Cause that's what keeps me going. Mm -hmm. Cause without the love, it's like, all right, now I gotta do something else. You feel me? And I don't wanna do that. So. Of course not. So. All right, so going back to the project real quick, I want to mm -hmm. hear what's your favorite track and what track you think is the most slept on. I I ain't gonna hold you. My favorite track is the intro, the first one. Like, okay. Straight. The intro was hard. Exactly. No hard. no filter, no nothing, no no fucking cut, no nothing, bro. Mm -hmm. I I was just in that shit. I felt how I felt. I heard the beat. I'm like, fuck it. It's time to really like. Put in pain, like no hook, no singer, no none of that. Like mm -hmm. that's really my favorite song, cause I could be in a fucked up mood. I could even be like doing something, but I know when I hear that shit, I'm up, I'm jumping, I'm time, exactly like I'm the, the whole aura of that song is just crazy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And intro. so, what song do you think is the most slept on? The song I think the most slept on, I would say to be honest with you, probably these hands. A lot of niggas really be sleeping on these hands. Like, <laughs> like if you ain't never had these hands, no funny shit. Go and listen to that song. These hands is 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 serious. Like the beat, everything. Like I wasn't even like how I'm on my rapping shit now. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to spit on that shit because I already knew like this shit gonna go crazy wherever you play it. Call in your crib, in your room, your dorm, whatever the fuck you doing. This shit gonna go crazy. So yeah, these hands. Y'all niggas need to. 
wake the fuck up, tune in, feel me? Okay, so what's your thoughts on music today? Mm-hmm. How do you feel not only like in Harlem, but just overall? What do you think is hot right now? Um, as far as like music, like my 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 thought on music today, I fuck with it. You mm-hmm. feel me? Like we doing what we doing. You feel me? Niggas is blending in. Niggas is doing I all types of shit. You feel me? Niggas got Latin drill, Afro drill. So niggas is mixing it in. And that's what I like though. You feel me? Because not everybody could just stay in one pocket. You feel me? We all got to touch on different things. So okay. You feel me? I I love that shit. As far as like the the music scene. And, and like Harlem and how I'm feeling about that. Like mm-hmm. I feel like as, as far as niggas in Harlem, like I'ma keep it a bend. Like we gotta do something. Like we gotta like stop with all this, yo, I'm number one, he taking over, he taking over. Cause that shit really not doing it for us right now. And I'ma keep it a, like I'm keeping it a G. Some niggas feel like they wanna take over this mm-hmm. and leave other niggas out here so they can just focus on taking over this. And it's not about that. It's just, if you can see, like, Brooklyn and the Bronx, these niggas is clicking up, linking up. And it's like, of course, they dissing each other, but they still promoting each other. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, bro. Niggas is not, like, really in tune with that. Even if Harlem, uh, us Harlem niggas is not dissing each other, mm-hmm. we still on some shit like, yo, we got, we got a voice. You feel me? We got to be heard. So I just look at it like, I, I fuck with all Harlem rappers. You feel me? You from Harlem, you getting it, you... Trying to put on for your block or whatever, mm-hmm. and keep doing it. You feel me? I don't. I ain't hating on nobody. I ain't shitting on nobody. But I, when it come down to me and my niggas, they all not fucking with us. You feel me? But that's another story. But <laughs> I, I, mean, I want to see us do good. I mean, realistically, you really just said some real shit because mm-hmm. I mean, I'm from Brooklyn, but I can acknowledge that right now. I think what Bronx is doing really, really well is that's they are fact. all working. They're working. They're working. You see one, you see in a few of them. All at the That's same time, they're building each other up and featured on each other's songs. So mm-hmm. I definitely can see where you're coming from with mm-hmm. that. And I mean, I haven't really heard of any harlem artist that's really like you know out there working that's what i'm working. saying like that's so i definitely feel you mm-hmm. i mean it takes more than just you know self-promotion you really gotta have people behind you and who that's else better to promote you other than people who are doing the same thing you know Good. come on you so we here we here i we definitely, here. definitely definitely <laughs> that's a fact okay so you mentioned the drill you mentioned like two different types of drill yeah so you into the drill scene right now I'm into it. It's crazy because a lot of my niggas, some of my niggas, they send me beats. Like, I just brought a beat. Well, I just brought a whole pack from Nico. Shout out to Nico. But some niggas be sending me beats. and I fuck with it. Okay. But that's the thing. Like I said, I don't want to get stuck in one pocket. Right. So, So, yeah, mm -hmm. that kind of leads to what I was going to ask you. Mm -hmm. So, how would you classify yourself as an artist? Or do you feel like, you know, you in your own box, Mm -hmm. you versatile? That's what I get from what you've been saying. No funny shit. I just feel like I'm 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 more like a, a diverse kind of artist because it comes to a point where I could find myself singing mm-hmm. and like I probably got like two R and B songs in the okay, cut. Uh, yo, I'm, I ain't gonna lie, man. Listen, listen, listen. I'm, <laughs> I, I sing and break down like Jodeci right now. Show me that. Let me. But like, I like I I just. I just love all types of music, so that's one. But mm-hmm. as far as like just me like classifying myself, I'm an all around artist. So we could do the lyrical thing, we could do the drill thing, we could okay. do the melodic thing, we could do it all. But just know I'm a I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna do me regardless. So okay, shit. All right. Cool. So what were some of your inspirations growing up? Mm, that's crazy. Musically. Mm. All right. So. Of course, I'm gonna always give like the props to like Tupac mm-hmm. and all that because, like, I he was the reason I wanted to rap, period. Mm-hmm. So, but as far as like what get me motivated to like do more music and, and really like keep shit going, like, no funny shit like Wayne, Future, Gucci, you know what I'm saying, Thugger. Mm-hmm. Like, these niggas, no funny shit. And I could say New York niggas, of course, like Jada and 50. But it's like, when I listen to these niggas kind of music, it's like, like yeah, oh, he just said some shit. He recorded this probably like 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. I'm just now catching on. Like, oh, shit, he really meant that. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. You know what? Let me go ahead and do my shit, too. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So, 
I really give like props to them niggas. Everybody I just named, I give props to them niggas. You feel me? So. Yeah, I mean, I was doing some research and I mm-hmm. saw you had said back in like, I want to say 2016, 2017. Mm-hmm. You were like, yeah, Jada is like the number one. He's been the number one since like Yo, third grade. No and I funny was like, shit. Okay, no so Jada definitely shit. has to be in your top. It, well, let me not assume. He's still in your top list. Yeah, right, he's so in my me, top five. Let me hear top your top five. All right, my top five. What you want, dead or alive? Because I'll be, oh, I go crazy. But let's do a live top five. Alive. We can do a live. All right. So my top five alive, of course, I give it to to Jada, number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, J Cole, number two. Mm-hmm. Um, damn, Future, number three. Thugger, number four, and for the fifth one. I ain't gonna hold you. The fifth one, I get the dirt. Okay. Like Dirk is, you can't go wrong fucking with Dirk. Like, okay. You know what I'm saying. So I mean, out of all the artists that you just named, everybody mm-hmm. has some sort of artistic quality that makes them stand out to not only you but people all over. So what do you think that you have that makes you stand out from all the rest? Shit. To be honest, I'm me. You feel me? Like, only I could do what I could do. You feel what I'm saying? So, only I would know the difference. You feel me? Of course, I'm going to express the difference to y'all, and that's for y'all to find out. But at the end of the day, I'm me. You feel me? Like, I could definitely do different things. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm pretty sure other niggas would tell you, like, yo, I'm different because I come from here. I come from here. Like, we all come from the struggle. You feel me? Like, but that's what makes us different because we all got different stories. Niggas all got different stories to tell. So it's just really up to you, like, whose story you really want to listen to. You feel me? A lot of niggas will sit there and be like, man, this nigga sound like this nigga. But he probably came from a whole different country, mm-hmm. whole different background. Did probably the realest shit the other niggas ever did. So it's like, at the end of the day, you got to listen and, and, you feel me, make that decision for yourself. I'm okay. different. Okay. I mean, that's fair. So what so far has been, like, the highlight of your career? Oh, uh, man. Uh, the highlight, mm-hmm. I ain't going to hold you. I had a couple highlights, but the one that was definitely in my career is when I met uh, Mac Miller, R.P. to Mac Miller. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Now, when I met him, it was just a different, like, different turnout. You feel me? He made me see, like, yo, this shit is possible. Like, it could really go down. Like, how, how the shit happened. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm no lie, I was trapping. So I how I met the nigga, I was trapping. Like uh-huh. of course I was still like doing songs, but like I said, I wasn't putting none of them shits out. Mm-hmm. But I was trapping, so the nigga um he came to this he came to, to it's a store right next to Amy Roof. Anybody that ever been to Amy Roof, it's a store right next to it. Trapping by myself too. Mm-hmm. Nigga comes, he's walking by himself, he's dolly. So right from the corner of my eye, I was probably on my phone, but from the corner of my eye, I see a white nigga walking to the store. So I'm cautious. I'm like, oh, nah, who this nigga? Like, you feel me? So I look through the glass of the store. I see, like, he don't look like no DT. You feel me? He buying cigarettes. So I'm like, all right. So I go so, back on my phone. I'm uh-huh. guessing this yeah, is pre-gentrification because now I know you see. Yo. That, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not crazy anymore. Nah, it's not. It's not. To be honest with you. So when 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 would you say this was? This Just was, so that we have a picture mm-hmm. of. Oh, uh, this was probably what 2017. Okay. 2000. Yeah, around there, 2017, 2018. It had to be 2018 the latest. But, okay. Yeah, I see him. He going to the store. So. He gets that, his yeah, he get his cigarettes, my <laughs> fool. But yeah, he come out. I'm like, oh shit, this is Mac Miller. I think at the time he just signed the new deal for like 10 M. So I'm like, oh shit, like. I'm a hood nigga. This is close as a nigga ever been to 10 M's. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, fuck that. I'm going to say something to this nigga. So I walk up to him. He ripped the, the tip of the cigarette, light the shit. I'm like, yo, you Mac Miller? He like, yeah, what's up, bro? So I'm like, oh, shit, what's good? Like, mad humble. I'm like, nothing. I'm, I'm chilling, bro. I'm like, I fuck with your shit, bro. Like, I'm just... <laughs> and at the end of the day, I just keep saying nigga. So it's like, I know he used to a nigga saying that, but it's like, I'm like, yo, chill. Like, you feel me? So... I'm like, yeah, yo, I fuck with your shit, my nigga, yo, 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 you feel me? Like, I'm, he like, so what you doing out here? I'm like, I'm trapping, bro. I digged in my pocket. I showed him everything I had. Like, he like, damn, bro, you got to be careful. I'm like, 
Yeah, I know, but back to you, bro. I really fuck with your shit, bro. You feel <laughs> me? Like, yo. But then um I had spit for him a little bit. I like at that time I was mad shot. So mm-hmm. I it really took me a lot to really say what I said. So he's like, yo, bro, I, I like it here. He grabbed my phone and put down his email. So he's like, yo, send me some more shit. So at that time, I ain't have no hope. So I'm like, oh shit, like this nigga ain't have no security. He talked to me. He, you feel me? I really spoke to him on on some one on one level shit, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Yo, send me some shit." I'm like, "All right," and he walked off by himself, and I'm like, "Yo," and then to see that he passed, I was just like, "Yo, this shit is like really crazy," because it's like he gave me inspiration. Absolutely, Mac Miller definitely was a real one. And I mean, I fucked with him from Kool Aid, of, of course, kids, yes, kids. yes, Absolutely. yes. So that's definitely dope that you were able to meet him before he passed. So. Mm-hmm. Who else have you met so far that's been like that has left some sort of like impact on you? Um, I ain't gonna hold you, <laughs> bro. Probably gonna laugh too, but I, he ain't giving no. I'm not going to shit on him and say he gave me inspiration, but you know what? He kind of did though. Mm-hmm. So niggas went to high school with Bari. All right, niggas went to high school with ASAP Bari. Okay. Now, at the time, I ain't going to hold you. I was a freshman. I think the nigga was a senior or some shit. So, we went to Chelsea High School. Now, this is, I guess, before the ASAP days, or he probably was still jacking ASAP, but nobody knew what ASAP was, right? Mm-hmm. The nigga probably got, he probably left school probably like a year or two. After that, the nigga was like with ASAP, doing ASAP, and all this ASAP shit. And I'm like, yo, bro, I was just in high school with this nigga. Like, mm-hmm. like, yo, like. Right? And then, like, to see what he became, it was just like, like, I'll be lying, not to say, like, I'll be lying if I say that wasn't inspiration, because, like, nigga, I saw this nigga. I remember he wasn't even going to class. Nigga was cutting class, everything. Right. I had Dom's lab, all that, bro. <laughs> like, like niggas really know. So it was just like, damn, the fact that, you feel me, he doing the balloon and all this shit. I'm like, yo, nigga came up. Mm-hmm. And that's how I should be. You feel me? Like. That's Stay down to the come up. So. so, what does the come up look like for you? What what does success overall look like to you? Success is where you can take care of your people. Mm-hmm. You feel me? A lot of niggas get success twisted with, which is with greed. Like, you feel me? Like, a nigga could have money, but that don't mean he's successful. Because at the end of the day, he probably don't get no respect. He probably don't get no love. Mm-hmm. You feel me? He probably can't call nobody when it's really, like, that time. So, it's like, what really... I mean, success is when you can really put on for your people, your moms, your aunts, your mans, they, they aunts, they grandmas. You feel what I'm saying? Because everybody always going through something. Mm-hmm. So it's just like if you that's successful to the point where you can take care of your people, mm-hmm. then nigga, at the end of the day, you already know the blessings is going to come back. So that's what I look at as success. You feel okay. me? So what advice would you give to somebody who's um, in the music industry right now? Um, if they wanted to know, like, how they could become successful? Um, shit. Stick to your heart. Trust your gut. Don't be afraid to step outside the box. Because a lot of niggas is not really going to put themselves out there. Like, you might want to put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. So, if nobody's uplifting you, if ain't nobody, like, really, like, telling you, like, yo, keep doing what you're doing... If nobody checking up on you, making sure you doing what you doing, mm-hmm. then it's like, fuck them. You feel me? Just keep doing you. But just know, like, if you got that that hope and that faith, that's all you really need. And just be your biggest fan, no matter what. You feel me? Niggas could tell you this. Niggas could tell you that. A hundred niggas could tell you your shit ain't shit. You ain't going to never be shit. Mm-hmm. But as long as you, your biggest fan, that's all the motivation you need to just keep going. So... And I think the work kind of, I mean, your words kind of speak for them, about themselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially being that you say, you know, you started writing when you were 15. You didn't start putting music out until you, until like three years yeah, ago. Yeah, like, yep. I mean, That's now you already got the projects out. You have a couple videos. Mm-hmm. You like, you know, doing your thing. I saw, like, you did a show with like P&B Rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Years yep. ago. That's like, a fact. You That's really a fact. been working. And so, you know, you gave yourself that push to do mm-hmm. what you need to do. So, if you're hearing this, he. He means what he say. He's saying what he really is. So That's I think a fucking fact. Like, you know what you're talking about, yeah. okay? So what what you got going on like right now? Um, what's what's coming out? Any new projects? Yeah, that's a fact. Um, I got a project. Me and my brother, 
Yeah. Brother Des Worthy. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, you, you, you can get on this real quick? Come on, gang. Just real quick. Just say, just say something. Come on, Des. Let's come on. Come on. Come on. Buzz it. Buzz a leany. <laughs> feel me? Talk your talk. School lap. Do lap. Yeah. yeah. Des Worthy. <laughs> yeah, that's my rapper name. Mm hmm. Talk your talk, bro. And where you Shit. from, Des? Harlem, too? Um, yeah, Harlem in the Bronx. All right, so y'all got something coming out or something out already? What's, yeah, so what's it? Tell, tell us about it. We got the OMBFR collab, me and my brother right here. Um, we've been working on this probably like a year and a half. Uh, like if you notice, he on Demonstrators too, he on Supreme. So at the end of the day, me and him been working, we've been on some shit. Like, look, we got to put out a collab because at the end of the day, like I said, you don't see niggas really like sticking together. And it's been my brother. So it's not even like the fact that we just two artists collabing. It's just the fact that like, nigga, he got potential. He talented. I know I got potential. I'm talented. Okay. So why not just niggas just shit on these niggas and go crazy? So that's what really what I got coming out. OMB, FR, Only My Brothers, Forever Rich. You feel me? It's coming out. We got single Buttercup about to go crazy. You feel me? Got everything. So it's like just be in tune. You feel me? And okay. So mm -hmm. as our surprise guest, yeah. I'm putting you on the spot here. Damn, like and being that. that you up here because of this collab, I want to hear That's who's five artists that you will want to collab with. Five artists I would want to collab with. Absolutely. I say the baby. Little baby. Dirt. Damn, it's a tough, it's a tough tool. <laughs> Nigga, thug in future. All right, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to yeah. edit my, my question because I hear no New York rappers in there or nothing nah, like that. Like, damn, um, come on, can we get a couple? Nah, I got you. Um, <laughs> part of my boy, um, Sleaze is Bryce. Okay. And shit, my boy, Chiba Lin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the whole game make music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see what's going on here. All right, well, let's go. All right, so I know you have, um, now I don't want to butcher the name, but you're a CEO yeah. of what? Forever Rich. Forever Rich. How's that going? What's that about? Now, Forever Rich, that was like, it started off as a group, to be honest with you. All right, and I don't want to get, I don't want niggas to get confused with my shit and Rich the Kid shit, because I know he got. Same name, uh, Rich Forever, whatever. Okay, so fuck. let's clear the air. Yeah, let's get it. All right, so mm -hmm. go ahead. All right, so, uh, no disrespect to nobody. You feel what I'm saying? But we we been on our Forever Rich shit since the beginning. Like you like worry. Like no <laughs> disrespect. Like, like we we been on that shit. You feel me? We been on that shit. So just the fact that wherever he come from, he come from wherever he come from. Now me, we 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 been on our shit. So like, Forever Rich, that's the label. You feel me? It started out as a group, um, and then to the point where niggas really got on some some real business shit. It was like, fuck it, we making music, we got artists. Why not just put this shit together and just really like try to make something out of it? So and we trying to build a legacy behind it too. So it ain't just a name. You feel me? Like this shit is really a lifestyle. Like niggas got shit. This shit tatted up and all that, like, so just to let niggas know, you feel me? I don't want niggas to get confused. Okay. You feel me? We doing us. We been doing us. That's a fact. All right, that's dope. So, what would you say is the hardest thing about being an underground artist? And does you're more than welcome to answer this too. Shit, to be real true. Go ahead, buzzer. The hardest part is like, I probably say like the promotion. Okay. And like just getting it out there, like, cause people would be like, who's this person? Like, you know? Mm -hmm. So it would probably be like the promotion. And shit. Shit, I'll let you say something. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no funny shit. He right though. The promotion, uh, yeah, like the promotion, the marketing, all of that shit come into play because it's like, number one, you gotta be strategic, especially when you come to, to marketing promoting now because it's like so much shit is viral everything is like changing mm -hmm. so it's like got to be up to date with everything TikTok, Trilla, everything so a nigga like me would would i'm mainly would tell niggas that's on some underground shit i call y'all the underdogs but i'll tell y'all look just 
make sure y'all on top of y'all game with the promotion shit. Before we wrap up, mm -hmm. in five years from now, when we look back at this interview, where where do you see yourself? Shit, me on top of the fucking world. I what think. does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> like on some real shit though. I picture everybody I'm here with, still with, of course. I picture us, M's richer, you feel me? I picture us way more happier. Not to say we ain't happy, but you feel me? That money do make you feel good, you feel me? But, of course, just being around the love, the support, the happiness, the family. A nigga like me, in five years, I'm just trying to make sure that a lot of my niggas, you know, get the benefits or whatever they wanted to do, whatever hobbies they ain't never really think they could do we can make it happen so it's like i know a lot of niggas that's doing clothes like i love to have a, a fucking store where it's nothing but like like black owned designers like even if you making your shit from from fucking putting the shit on from the internet on the, your, your clothes whatever the fuck y'all niggas do mm -hmm. i want to support y'all i want to make sure everybody eat and take care of Harlem. And just, you feel me, have my music still out here. Of course, five years from now, we definitely going to be up. And that's a guarantee. So. Okay, Go that ahead. sounds good. You said, like, opening um, businesses and stuff. Keep being here for, like, the long run through the years. Okay. All right, well, I'm very happy that you guys stopped by. That's a fact. Thank you to Rada. Thank you to our special guest. <laughs> Son Des Worthy shitting me. Make sure y'all shout out y'all Instagrams and social medias before we wrap. Yo, oh, <laughs> my Instagram, like she just said, gutter <laughs> underscore Rican. You feel me? I, you can reach me, Instagram, features, email me. And that's it. I know the vibes, man. You feel me? Okay. Look out. Music on the way. Shitting me. Stay tuned and tap into demonstrators on all streaming platforms. That's a fact.